I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. The last video in this livestock series was about quarantine basics. What do you need for a quarantine tank and getting it to the point where it's ready to receive water. So if you missed part one about quarantine basics, make sure you go back and watch it. Quarantine is straightforward and you need the basics to make sure that you're ready to take the next steps. Once your quarantine tank is set up and you have water in it, it needs to be cycled. There are a couple easy ways to do this. With water from your display tank. Take the water you're using for a water change and use it to fill up the quarantine tank. Bacteria in a bottle product. Using a bacteria in a bottle product like Dr. Tim's one and only Nutch Fine Bacteria in Fritz Turbo Start 9. A sponge filter soaked in your display tank. You can leave the sponge filter soaking in your sump and then transfer it to the quarantine tank to inoculate the tank with nitrifying bacteria. Once you get your new fish, it's time to put them in your quarantine tank. Of course, leave the lights off in the room if you've got your animals shipped in. This will prevent light shocking the fish. The first day that the fish are in the quarantine tank, I like to leave the lights off on the quarantine tank. This helps everyone settle in. After the first day, turn on the lights to encourage the fish to come out. Pro tip, set the light schedule on your quarantine tank to the same schedule as your display tank. This will make the fish's transition to your display tank that much easier. Part of the reason you're quarantining your fish is to condition them. You want them to start eating your food and getting used to your routines. Pro tip, I have found feeding live brine helps new arrivals start eating. This also helps finicky eaters start to eat your prepared food. Your local fish store may stock live brine, and I get mine from Live Aquaria under the food section. Select foods, then live foods, and scroll down to live brine. Once the new arrivals are eating live brine, mix in your prepared food, and most fish will make the transition quickly. Once fish go into the quarantine tank, you need to assume that the quarantine tank and anything in it is contaminated. This goes for anything touching the quarantine tank as well. So if you use a net to catch a fish, this is then contaminated and needs to be sterilized. Any PVC pieces that are in the quarantine tank, they are also contaminated and they need to be sterilized before they come out of your quarantine system. Easiest way to sterilize them, well, all you gotta do, grab some household bleach in a bucket, Half cup of bleach per gallon is gonna nuke any disease that's in or on any of these pieces of equipment. Now keep this in mind. Simply drying out this equipment or washing it with fresh water isn't sufficient to properly sterilize them. You need bleach to get the job done. Now, you gotta keep diseases out of your tank, that's why you're quarantining, but what diseases do you need to watch for during the quarantine process? The common diseases you wanna watch for in quarantine are ick, marine velvet, flukes, and uranema. Treating and recognizing these diseases is a whole different ball of wax. So for now, I just want you to know what you're looking for. Now besides the diseases, what else do you need to be watching for in quarantine? Pro tip, your nutrients need to be watched, but you don't need to be concerned until they get over 30 parts per million for nitrates. Don't worry about your phosphates, your magnesium, or your calcium, or even your alkalinity levels. Nitrates are where you wanna focus your attention. Once your nitrates exceed 30 parts per million, then do a water change. Once your fish have cleared the quarantine process, it's time to put them in your display tank. And I like to ease their transition as much as possible. I do that through a couple ways. One, I like to use an acclimation box. This is a box that sits inside your tank that keeps those new fish in a small area while they get to look at the fish in your tank and the fish in your tank get to look at them. This is a way you can feel on if there's gonna be any aggression because if one of the fish in your tank doesn't like one of the fish in the quarantine box or vice versa, they'll attack the sides of that holding box Then you can go, oh, this might not turn out well. Maybe I should remove the aggressor in the tank or hold out that new fish that's coming in. It also lets the fish in your tank have a look at these new fish and realize that they're not food. In my tank, whenever I lift the lid, my trigger fish comes flying into view thinking, it's time to eat. If I plopped on a new fish when I lifted up the lid, he might mistake that new arrival for food. So the acclimation box lets the fish have a look around, let the current fish have a look at the new guys, and it lets them settle in. Now another thing I like to do once those new fish go into the tank is, I like to go lights out for the first day. I'll turn off all the lights in my display tank, let everyone settle in to avoid any aggression. If you're not setting up your quarantine tank again with new fish, go ahead and take down that quarantine tank, sterilize it, and put it away. It's easy to restart your quarantine tank with water from your display tank, a sponge that's soaking in your sump, 
or a bacteria in a bottle product. No need to try to keep that quarantine tank up and rolling. I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. I'll catch you in the next episode.